Today, we are taking a look at three early stage, up and coming, scrappy play to earn games that you have the potential to go ahead and get into and hopefully make some cash. So we're going to be taking a look at Monkey League, Animalia, as well as Metasource. With a quick intro, if it's your first time here, my name is Ryan, and this is a No Autopilot YouTube channel. I apologize in advance for the offensiveness of my face, it's, I was just born this way. On this channel, in essence, I go out and I do deep token reviews. So I ask the community, hey, what token do you want me to look at? And then whatever gets the most votes, I go out and I cover. If you want an example, here's the ongoing list of all the different projects that we're working on to try and get some content out on the channel. So if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing so you can stay in the loop on any hot content that we drop. So the first game we're talking about today is Monkey League. Okay, Monkey League. So Monkey League is built on the Solana blockchain. And if you want, just kind of envision FIFA meets Rocket League. Okay, that's what they're pretty much in essence trying to knock out here. Um, it's a 4v4 soccer match that allows player versus environment, player versus player, as well as team versus team. Now, one thing that stood out to me, and it, you know, if you guys are OGs to this channel, you already know, I do a lot of research into these projects. And behind Monkey League, they have a uh, contributing partner, and that is uh, Polymos. Now, Polymos is a GameFi platform, Guild, and DAO that, in essence, goes ahead and incubates and helps launch some games. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, who are these run-of-the-mill games? I've never heard of them, whatever. Well, if I scroll down a little bit, maybe you've heard of Alluvium. Maybe you've heard of Alluvium, which was a partner that Polymos was involved with. Now, here's kind of a quick little screenshot of gameplay. This thing is super early, super, super early. A um, couple of neat aspects of it. So you go ahead and you have these different monkeys and they have different traits. And you're going to have the ability to go ahead and breed them to create even higher skills uh, and higher traits. Kind of like Axie Infinity, if you will. Now, we talk about, OK, cool, but how can I actually make money playing this thing? There's three ways. Winning matches. Hosting matches through your own stadiums. So like in essence, owning the stadium as an NFT. And then third, you can even make money just rooting for the team as a spectator on the sidelines. How are you not going to love it? How are you not going to love it? Now, we like to take a look at the founding team behind these projects because we don't want to put our money into a scam. Good news is these founders are legit. So we have uh, Raz Friedman. Hopefully I didn't butcher your name. Apologize if I did, Raz. And he actually comes over from uh, Platica, which I also may have butchered. And they have all these different games that they've developed and they've launched. And he's a chief product officer. Now, Platica is actually kind of a big deal because they're traded on the NASDAQ. So if you want some concrete evidence that the team behind this is legit and they have some experience putting out some games, how about listing on the NASDAQ exchange? Haven't seen that yet. The other co-founder here is uh, Shahaf, and Shahaf, again, apologize if I messed up your name there, brother. And you may know him because he's the founder of Cody, the layer one blockchain that's out there right now. And I had a, a member of the community go ahead and make a mint off of Cody, so good to see that name pop up. Now we go ahead and we take a look at growth, okay? Where are we at? So they did go ahead and they already wrapped up. They finished the pre-sale of the MBS token and we missed out on it, unfortunately. But we are right here, kind of in this breeding season section. And there is the ability for you to go out and actually buy the NFTs for Monkey League uh, straight in the secondary market. And that's really important. And you'll find out why here in just a second. Now, I mentioned that they had an IDO. They went ahead and they listed that IDO for four cents. Which kind of circles back to the point, I think there's two main ways to make a ton of money for play to earn games. One is to bootstrap the IDO, get in at four cents, tokens currently at 56 cents, you did all right for yourself. And then the other one, which I think is going to be more applicable to what we're talking about today, is actually play the game and be a valuable member of the community helping it grow. Because look, look at all these videos, all right, $100 a day, $1,000 a day. Like some of these are clickbait, but there are people out there making a grip of money from play to earn games. And the trick is, is to go ahead and get early so you can participate, stack some of the tokens and just be in a really, really special spot to earn from the project. Now, they do also have a governance token called score, 
which they're not going to public release. What they're going to go ahead and do is if you have one of the uh, one of the uh, Monkey League NFTs and you're playing and you're active, they're going to go ahead and airdrop those score tokens on all those players. And so what? Who wants a score token? Well, guess what? They're going to go ahead and split revenues across all governance token holders going forward once this thing is launched. So in essence, if you play the game, you're a good community member, you're helping it improve and grow, you're going to get some score tokens and return from that. You're going to be able to share in the revenues of the project as it blossoms. Fire. Fire. Here's some more information on that. This is all listed on their white paper, which I'll put in the description down below. But in essence, if you want to go ahead and you want to hit that marketplace, these are some of the uh, the Monkey League uh, NFTs are up right now for auction. Lowest price that I could see was around a thousand bucks. So it definitely is going to have a little bit of an upfront cost. But long term, not financial advice, but sharing revenues on a protocol that may have millions of users sounds pretty cool. Now, if you want to go ahead, you have to actually buy the token itself, MBS. It is listed on a bunch of exchanges. Um, honestly, I think the best play on this one is if you were able to get your hands on one of those early NFTs and gain access to the game and be able to stack tokens, earn governance tokens, and go ahead and parlay that into your future of doing really, really well for yourself. So the second game that we're going to be talking about is Castles, the NFT card collecting stacking game. So why should you care? Okay, why should you care about castles? Well, it's pretty straightforward. So in essence, what you do is you go ahead and you collect lands. Okay, so let's say you have three lands. You go ahead, you can merge those three lands together to get a ranch. You can merge three ranches together to get a village. Onward and onward and onward. But why? Why would you or I care about doing that? Well, if you scroll down just a little bit further, you'll see total earnings. And if you have land, you go ahead and you earn a certain amount of Metasource tokens per hour based on the land that you own. So that's pretty darn sick. That's pretty darn cool. In addition to that, these are all NFTs. And so there is an NFT marketplace where you can go and you can flip these things. Now look, as a crypto YouTuber, hopefully I don't get messed up for showing this, but I'm gonna show it anyways. As a crypto YouTuber, I get messages all the time saying, hey, I'd love to give you $1,000 to review my scammy, run of the mill, uh, cash grab type project, right? Like just look at some of these things here. We watched all your videos, all of them, and we're very interested. We would like to work with you on a promotional video. If you're interested, please reply. Reached out to me. I'm just gonna share with you the complete exchange. So they reached out, said, hey, would you be interested in covering our project? I said, let's go ahead, let's talk about some details. Does the founding team have business experience or game development experience? Do you have any VC partners? And they were completely upfront and honest and said, look, this is a dream of ours. We came together to try and launch a game in crypto. I asked the question kind of point and blank. You know, I was like, okay, so why, without experience building games or running a game company, why should I, as a gamer, be interested in Metasource? And this is what they said. This is verbatim. Hopefully I'm not in trouble for like sharing this, but I just want to be transparent. We're not out of touch corporate types looking to make a quick buck. We struggled hard to get to where we are, building contracts, hiding, hiring developers, creating our contracts, artists to make the art, building a community. We have 2,500 people in our Discord. So the founding team behind this project is Robert, as well as Joshua, and their art is managed right now by Mark. Now, we went we pulled up the LinkedIn pages for Robert. He actually has a long uh, career in art, in particular as a screenwriter. He's worked on the Walking Dead uh, franchise on a couple different projects. And then we also have Joshua, who is currently uh, actually a, an accountant for a company. Not going to fully dox him, but he's an accountant for a company. So pretty much they're chasing a dream. Okay, they're chasing a dream. And I'm always for the fan of the underdog, right? It doesn't have to be these AAA studios now coming to crypto because they can see they make a bunch of money. Or venture capital firms piling in kind of a half-assed project just to make a buck. So I like voting. I like voting for those up-and-comer scrappy type that are trying to chase their dream because I can relate to that. That's what I'm doing with my YouTube channel. So anyways, to go ahead and kind of provide a little bit more uh, concrete evidence behind, I think, the trustworthiness of this team, since it does seem like an earlier stage project, it is listed on DAP Radar. This is a new announcement. And if you go ahead, you look at the transaction activity and volume, looks like both of those values are pointing up. 
And then I also snag this from their Discord. Hopefully I don't get slapped for sharing this. But we also like to look at social sentiment, see how people are piling into projects. Their visitors are up 800% over the last week. Communication is up 1,700%. New members that have actually joined is up 13,000%. So when you're talking about getting in early to something that's budding, I think this could, not financial advice, I think this could be a very fair option for you to evaluate. Okay, enough of the emotional stuff. How can I make money in this thing? Okay, why do I care? So one, they're gonna have special timed events, right? Where if you're participating in the game and you're crafting land, if you could do it quicker or better than some other people who are also doing it, you're gonna have the ability to go ahead and earn some additional tokens. They do also have a land sale that's just happening tomorrow, actually is the first land sale, maximum amount of available NFTs for these packs. And we'll go ahead, we'll kind of dive in in greater detail what these do, but in essence, you go to open a pack, it has a bunch of cards in it. You go ahead and you use those cards to stack them together, right? So three farms equal a ranch, three ranches equal a village. The higher you get up, the higher that you earn in your daily passive rewards from Metasource. There are some plans to go ahead and create a royalty share also. So this uh, NFT called Royal Seals, and it allows you to go ahead and refresh your Baron, which is one of the most expensive NFTs right now in this ecosystem. Because what the Baron does, it goes ahead and generates a land NFT, in essence, just by owning it every single day. And so if you have this Royal Seal, it goes ahead and it refreshes that Baron uh, once a week, which is required. So anyhow, so if you have that in place, at some point when they go ahead and they release Wonders, you're going to be able to share in the royalties from those purchases. Now, the next question I said is, OK, cool, I have a bunch of NFTs, but is there actually a market for it? Or am I just going to be sitting on these things with nothing to do for them? Well, if you pull up Atomic Hub, which is a NFT uh, trading center for the Wax blockchain, where this, where this is based, you can see that they have a bunch of these NFTs listed. And the Baron... As I mentioned, it's one of the most expensive. It's right there for around 467 bucks. Now, the token. So this is the Metasource token. I believe I have this set up for the four hour, yeah, I do, uh, all time history. I will say one thing, in order to get the token, you have to use the Alcor Exchange, which is a decentralized exchange built on WAX. And since it is kind of a brand new, still budding project, the liquidity of when you go ahead and you try and sell or buy or trade, could be an issue, right? At some point, if you have, let's say, tens of thousands of dollars and the liquidity didn't grow, you'd have an issue cashing that out. But I talked to the devs, talked to the founders, and based on the growth that we kind of looked at, we feel like this is going to kind of smooth out here in the near term. Now, also looking at the tokens, so there's 60 trillion tokens in circulation, 5% of which goes to their developer wallet, which is right there. They go ahead and list that for you if you want to dig into that wallet yourself. And actually, I have it pulled up here. So there's that. Now the scarcity. So there is some pre-built scarcity in this thing, right? So as farms are minted, the uh, the cost to go ahead and mint them and create them is gonna gradually increase over time. So I think the play there is, again, if you're actually gonna be a contributing member of the community and play the game, is to go ahead and get in early and power farm, power farm. Now we went ahead, we touched on this a little bit too, but the wonders, so this is a development they're gonna be adding to the game uh, at some point in the future, where again, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna have a revenue share based on some of these that you own. And they also went ahead and they listed that uh, as an example for farms, right? So as new farms are minted, a percentage of those farms are going to be burnt permanently, creating a reduced supply on that token. So all in all, I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, when I very first jumped on the website, I thought maybe, okay, maybe, is this a scam? And I think the truth is, honestly, it's just a, a small team that's trying to build this thing from the ground up, chasing that dream of creating an NFT play to earn game. They're hiring a bunch of people to help them get everything going. And I think they're making awesome, awesome progress. And I'm super happy that they reached out to me to talk about it. So the last play to earn game that we're going to be talking about is going to be Animalia. Animalia. Now, Animalia is a play-to-earn collectible card battler, but it's intertwined with crypto, right? You got your bulls, you got your bears, and you also got your little Shiba Inus right there. You got to love it. So I'll go ahead, I'll play kind of a quick clip for you right here so you can see it. But just imagine uh, Magic the Gathering meets the subreddit cryptocurrency. 
okay, in a play to earn NFT battler game. And that's pretty much what you're getting right here. Now, we went ahead and we pulled up uh, G10 Ventures because if you scroll down here to their partners, they are backed by the VC firm uh, GD10. And they do have a bunch of content out there talking about why they went ahead and they backed this project. I will say, one of the things that stood out to me as a concern is I go ahead and I pull up the founders, which are listed on their website right here, and there isn't a great deal of content about them, like job history. I pulled up a couple of them. That's just me. But I pulled up a couple of them, and I couldn't find a ton. So if you are going to go ahead and participate in this one, just make sure you do your own research and make sure you're investing wisely. Now, this one's a little bit unique because this one isn't launched yet. OK, we talked about IDOs at the beginning of the video and the value that there is in getting in early. 14 cents per BUSD is the current planned price when they go ahead and they open this thing up. And the total token supply is estimated to be around 87 million. So it's not a lot. It's not a lot. As for the game itself, you can't really see it here because it's so small, but in essence, they're planning on launching it in Q3 2022. So if we compare that 14 cents getting in an IDO with another card battler, Alluvium, that has 10, million, has 10 million tokens, right? So this is what, almost uh, 10x that. But anyhow, the token is trading at 611. So that kind of gives you a pretty strong runway just based on the total amount of tokens that are going to be in circulation that aren't very much. So again, this one, if you want to go ahead, you want to get after this one and make some money. I think the potential play, not financial advice, is to go ahead and participate in the Trustpad IDO uh, listing of this token. Get a whole bunch of them for 14 cents and likely go ahead and do pretty well for yourself. Now, we touched on this already, but the 87 million total tokens, they go and they show the breakdown from seed sale, private sale, public sale, as you have. Now, there are two tokens used in this universe, okay? One is NIM, and that's going to be used for purchasing card packs as well as providing rewards for people who stake on this protocol. And they also have PHL, and that's going to be the one that's used for bonding and crafting NFTs, in-game purchases, uh, reward distributions, in, in essence, kind of an end game currency, right? The one that's likely going to have a very, very large supply because it's meant to go ahead and be easy to facilitate transactions. So there you have it. There's three games that I got my keen little eye on in the play to earn space that are early stage and I think have a lot of potential. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, are there some other play to earn games that I'm sleeping on? That you need to tell me about if so also let me know that in the comments down below and maybe i'll put a video out on it who knows but there you go 